On this episode, Christian does trigonometry. Sign! But he also delves into alternatives. The friendship with Sign has ended. <laughs> new friend, new best friend is modular. <laughs> All to satisfy rather strange desires. Ah yeah, we died to bullet, baby! Hi everybody, I'm Christian. Welcome to, um, you know what it is. It is our beautiful shmup tutorial. We're making a shmup in Pico 8. And I'm still a bit tired uh, recording on the same evening. But, oh man, how can you be tired when you look at this? This this beautiful, oh look, there's an enemy I want to start. Ah, we intercepted it. Ah, oh, another enemy. Ah, oh, we intercepted it. Another enemy up there. Perfection. Mwah. <laughs> um, right, so today we are going to continue with any, any behavior. There's something else we are still working on, a little bit tweaking stuff. There's some things I want to maybe uh, maybe think about. Um, and there's also enemy bullets. Um, that's something that, that is going to be a big, big topic that I wanted to focus on today. Um, we, actually, while we're here, let's upgrade this, this to-do list. Uh, I also want to, in the future, I also want to have pickups. Bomb question mark. And I, of course, the. Who, who could forget the boss? Right, but I, today I wanted to kind of wrap up the enemy behavior. We kind of like. It's kind of already doing really well. Uh, and then I want to move on. Uh, I'm, I want to start adding the bullets today. What do I want to change about the behavior? Um, something that I'm thinking about is the following. Something that I notice is that okay, we have like this spawning rate, and it's kind of like this uh, every two seconds a new enemy approaches, and you can, as you can see, it's it's not. Oh, see, that wasn't actually shaking. That's weird. See, it's 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 just I can just shoot them enemies down, and it's, it's and nothing changes, right? Hmm, we have to research this why sometimes enemies are not shaking maybe we need to multiply let's multiply the shake mm. because sometimes there's like um maybe the enemy is not exactly on an integer uh, position and and when that happens we might want to just like add just a little bit to the sign 1.5 Oh yeah, now the sh now the now they're moving really. So can we can we maybe just one point two, just not too much? But they're moving they're moving in both directions. Seems like. Uh, see see. Mm, this shaking is a bit not aggressive enough and I cannot really go further down because if I go, go further down then it, it becomes invisible or maybe now it will now see now it's no longer visible because we get like the, the problem with the sign what about 2.1 What if it's like 20? Like, I just want to research what, how the shaking, and now I'm tweaking this shake here. Sign! I don't like the sign. Let's, let's, let's try a different approach. Um, because the sign can be sometimes a bit unpredictable. Um, let's try uh, the, the modulo, the, our new friend. The friendship with sign has ended. <laughs> new friend, new best friend is modulo. <laughs> Um, so modulo, as I said, is like this thing where we're gonna go, go T the uh, modulo and then five, and then every five frames something will happen, right? So we're gonna go if T um, uh, modulo five is smaller than two, uh, then, and in this case, we're just gonna get add one to sprite X, something like this. <laughs> Oh, there we go. It's a bit slow now, so let's lower it down to four. Yeah, that's 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 a shake right there. That, see, 
Sign. Who needs sign anyway? Um, just to explain what we did, because it's a bit different appro approach of modular to that previously. Um, as I said, like we, if you have a T modulo four, then it returns the reminder of a division by four, which means the sequence we're getting is zero, one, two, three. Um, let's do a comment. Zero, one, two, three. Never actually reaching four. Um, just re repeating, going from zero to three, right? Um, what we did previously is like we're checking if something is equal zero, if the reminder is equal zero, which gets us, you know, something that repeats periodically every four frames. One, two, three, four, right? So it's like one, like something happens, one, two, three, something happens, one, two, three, something. So every four frames, something happens. Um, but we were checking if, if the modulo, if the reminder was, um, was exactly zero. We're just checking if, well, if it's exactly zero. And now I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark the kind of like the locations and at which we're gonna trigger something, right? So this will just trigger something once, exactly at one frame every four frames. But here we're checking if something is smaller than if the if the reminder is smaller than two. This allows us to trigger something for uh, multiple fr frames. So in this case, for two frames. Right? Smaller than two. Right? So we have two frames where the guy is moved, the sprite is moved to the left, and two frames where he's not moved to the left. Two frames, like he's shaking basically back and forth, but always like staying two frames at, at a, a given spot. Jumping between uh, uh, two spots and always staying in each spot for two frames. And you can you can change kind of like the behavior. You could, for example, you can make it maybe stay at one spot for three frames and then another spot for one frame. So get like an, um, not an even shaking. We can do that, but I'm just going um, smaller than three. So you see now it's now it's no longer an even shake. So there's different ways of doing this. And also you can also add it like the those the four and the two, those can become different numbers and you will get different shakes out of it. And I encourage you to experiment with this. Maybe maybe there's there's better shakes, you know. Who am I to decide? Find find your shake. Right. So okay, this is good. This is this shake is is is, is done, but that's that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to um so as I said, it's kind of easy to keep up with with the pace, and the pace doesn't change. And something we can do is maybe over this, um, uh, like as the uh, level continues, to crank up the pace so the enemies are spawning faster. I think Space Invaders actually does that. The less enemies that are on the screen, the faster they're coming in. Um, but I think another good good way of doing this, which I kind of really like, is um, to when you kill an enemy that had that is on a mission. You will get more points, but you will also trigger an other an, an enemy. So it's it's kind of like the more aggressive you are at shooting down the enemies that are on a mission or on an attack mission, the more they will start attacking you. Um, so in, for this thing, I'm going to actually go to and you, look, you know, look. This update game function has become so large; it is so unwieldy. I actually want to. I'm here to actually clean things up a little bit. I like how we did this do enemy function in the, when we're upgrading enemies. So we moved all of the logic of the enemies, we moved it somewhere else where we can deal with this. And I'm thinking of doing something else. When we're killing an enemy, we're gonna, we're gonna create a function for this. I think that's a good idea. I, I just do a kill n my n. And we will just do all of the all of the gameplay stuff for for that enemy because a lot of things will happen when when we kill an enemy. Right. So I created a kill end function here. I'm just um, pasting in the the stuff that we already had that we are deleting and the enemy from the enemies list that we're playing a sound effect. We're adding the score. Like all of the stuff will be part of the kill end function. And here we can also go if uh, my n dot mission equals uh, attack, then so we killed an enemy that was about to attack, and then you know we can maybe get a better score. We not deal with the score right now, um, but later. 
Um, in this case, I want to um, pick. I want to pick a new attacker, and I, I kind of don't like how in, in this picking function we are. It's kind of awkward. We are. Um, we are. We have the timer here, the the modular timer, but we're also doing the, the actual picking. I want to maybe disentangle this. So let's do. I'm going to create another function called pick attack. And all this stuff here uh, that's going to be in its own function. So this, this function will basically make sure that a new attacker starts attacking. And this allows us, uh, if we kill somebody that is currently in, uh, in an attack, then we're going to pick another attacker. Um, and here, this function, this picking function, this is basically going to be pick the picking timer. So let's go pick, let's rename it actually to pick timer. And here, uh, when, uh, when the modular timer triggers, then we're going to pick an attack. And that's going to be this function here. And now we're going to, we're going to make sure that when we call the function, we're actually using the new name. I think it was called picking, right? Or picker. Oh my gosh. Oh man, it's an update function. Picking, and it was picking after all. I'm gonna call it pick timer. Okay, so just like move things around a little bit, you know, organize everything, put things into its their own functions. So now killing an enemy should uh, you know, in, inspire a new attack. <laughs> See, now there's two attackers. Oh my gosh, they're, see now they're, they're, it's getting really out of hand. <laughs> because obviously the timer still also still works, so now the enemies are coming. So this is really good because then you no longer deal with one enemy and there's multiple enemies coming in. Oh, interesting, an error. Um, right. Okay, so my N in the pick attack function, my n was set to nil and therefore everything crashed. So maybe our the code here is not ideal after all. I'm just gonna ignore the problem and was, I'm gonna actually do this this security uh, if statement that I was talking about. If my n equals nil, then return end. If something went wrong, we're abandoning the ship. <laughs> we're not doing any anything else, okay? Um, I'm not exactly sure why this happened. We're gonna have to investigate. You guys, prob you, you guys in the comments will probably let, will let me know. Now you can see this immediately causes like this problem that you know this escalates very quickly and we get a lot of attackers. So later on we might introduce actually uh, maybe like an upper bound to an amount of attackers that we have on the screen at any given time. Um, but for now, I, it's fine, I think. Oh, something we can also do is maybe to just like rain things down a little bit. We can do an R and um, we can do a, it only actually does this in, uh, you know, randomly. So if R and D is smaller than 0 0.5, so, so in half of the cases we do this and the other half of the cases we don't do this. Maybe this will actually uh, tone down the violence a little bit, you know. See now, this is a this is a bit better. And you know, this is this is uh, balance, right? Nice. Oh, I think I know what happened. I think I know what happened. Uh, why this 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 problem appeared? So this I killed the final enemy uh, that was attacking. And that deleted that enemy from the array, and then it tried to pick a new attacker, but it didn't work anymore because that was the last enemy in the wave. Whew. So then my my math was all, all right after all. Right. So um, so this works. Let us talk about uh, let us talk about bullets, enemy bullets. We want to enemies to also spawn bullets. Let's just do this. 
Uh, we already have bullets. Now we have different types of bullets. Just as there are E cars now, there's going to be E bulls. <laughs> Enemy bullets. Um, and there's um, two places where bullets will appear. One place is, you know, periodically just as with the attackers that are going down. Uh, periodically, yeah, like in Space Invaders, the enemies will shoot down bullets. And uh, we're going to figure out how that works. So we're going to have another picker like we had pre previously with the attackers. But instead of, instead of like doing the diving attack, the bullets will just like, they will just shoot bullets. Uh, and other um, situation where enemies will shoot bullets is maybe during an attack, maybe some of the attacks will actually have enemies shoot bullets. Uh, and I have a specific enemy in mind, that's going to be the yellow one. Uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking of making this an enemy that kind of like does a spread shot that to really saturate the screen with, with bullets. Um, so yeah, we're going to think about that. Right, so uh, enemies having bullet means that we actually have to draw bullets. And this is a big topic. Um, enemy bullets in shmups have to be really visible and um, you have to really experiment with a design that really works for you. I'm gonna copy in the design that actually I derived experimentally. Enemy bullets have, we have to really consider like the color of the enemy, enemy bullets. Um, I think it's always a good idea in, in when you're designing a shmup to maybe come up with a color scheme where the enemy bullets have like a special color reserved to them, right? So there are certain colors that uh, nothing in, on the screen will have only bullets. So the players will have an easier time to recognize what is a bullet and what is not a bullet. Another thing that's I think quite important is to make also sure that the enemy bullets are flashing. Now, if once you start having flashing things on the screen, things can go south very easily um, because there can be too much flashing and that can be unpleasant to look at and you know might even trigger seizures or something, which maps we are always kind of like, um, on the edge of, you know, on human perception, I think. <laughs> I mean, it sounds a bit, you know, like, wow, on the edge of human perception, like, come on, it's just a game where you shoot at things. But it's true, we're trying to really um, challenge, you know, your ability to process things on the screen. We're packing a lot of objects on the screen and you, we, we're challenging, you to, challenging the player to make sense of what's happening. And this can go over the line very, very easily. Um, but yeah, so this is my design of the bullet and basically this bullet will, f will cycle. It will flash, right? And I, I want to have an animation where this bullet is flashing like this. Okay. So let us start with the drawing part. Um, just as we're drawing, um, bullets here, we can just draw the enemy bullets. Uh, with the enemy bullets, I want to draw them as as late as possible, even above the particles, because if there's an explosion, I don't want the explosion to cover up bullets. I want the bullets to be visible above the explosion, actually. So that's why I want to draw it. And see, now the indentation really helps us to see where uh, we're drawing, drawing E bullets. E bullets. Uh, so for my bull and all E bullets, we're going to draw the sprite my bull. I'm just going to call it my E bull. <laughs> Uh, right. Let's just spawn a bullet. Uh, I want to see a bullet. I want to see a bullet. Um, uh, where are we going to do this? Let's just do this in the in the in the wave spawning function here. Right. And let's, let's just going to add something to the bullet. So we're going to go um, uh, e bulls or or uh, local my e bull equals make SPR uh, and then we're gonna go my evil I'm just gonna want to see a sprite I just I, I'm just like really uh, I, let's let's just I want to see the sprite uh, 33 uh, dot SPR equals 33 and then we're gonna go um, add evils my evil it's just another array we had that before. I mean, we have so many of these. We have particles, uh, particles maybe not so much, but we have enemies, we have bullets, uh, we have our actual ship, but now we have also an array full of e bulls and there's it's another array full of objects, which are sprites, which we can, we can draw to the screen using our sprite function. That's good. All right, so we're adding this e bulls thing 
uh, and we sh oh yeah we maybe should have a position for the for this for the evil I want it to um, it to be visible on this in the center of the screen so x equals 64 y uh, 74 something like this we should see a bullet there it is there is a bullet <laughs> we're not colliding with it but we already see it. that's good so something I wanted to maybe do now is I wanted to do the animation of the bullet because as I said, there's multiple frames of the bullet, the bullet, and there's this whole animation here. And I want to, yeah, I want to animate this. Um, so far, there is another thing in our game that also has an animation. And so I want to maybe just reuse that code. Uh, and even better, I want to make, maybe actually make it like an universal, uh, a universal function that we can just reuse for the evils. Uh, where is this? Uh, oh, okay, it's gonna be in update function. Ah, man. I, see, I'm and once you get into the into the end game of your game development, you will start spending a lot of time searching for things. But yeah, here we go. Uh, we here is the enemy animation, and this entire block I'm just gonna copy out, and I'm gonna create a new f um, function called animate. Animate, just animate the thing using our animation function. And we're gonna go function animate. Now I put it in behavior map. Maybe we should put it in ways and enemies. I'm not sure. Uh, it's kind of like in a weird tab. It's kind of like this has become my favorite tab and now everything goes into, into this tab. I'm not sure if, if behavior is the right place for this to go, but whatever. Um, my N. We're gonna use my n because we are using my n. I just wanted to change it because technically it doesn't have to be an enemy. It could be something else that is animated. Uh, it just has to be, have an animation frame property, animation speed property, and the any property. And the any property will contain an array of frames. That's something that we did when we spawning the enemies. We remember, right? When we spawning enemies. Here, we're giving them an array of individual animation frames. And so that's something that we need to do with the bullets as well, with the e-bullets. So I'm gonna go again to the, um, mm, well, okay. Let's just do this first. So I'm gonna go to the tab number four, all the way up, uh, where we are sp spawning wave number one. And here I'm gonna go my e -bull dot any equals, and then I'm gonna give it the 32, 33, 34. 32, 33, 34. And then maybe I wanted to back, loop back, so we're gonna go 33 again. So 32, 3, 4, back to 3, and then it loops back to 2 again. So it will go like rup, 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 rup. That's something I, because it, like the, the middle one is kind of like the brighter version of the dark one, like this is the dark version, this is the middle version, this is the really bright version. So you kind of like would have more of a, more of a natural flashing animation. Now, if we do this now, spoiler alert, it won't work. Because we're not we're not updating the bullets. <laughs> uh, so let's do that real quick. Um, let's go to the update function. Here's where we're moving the bullets. So let's just move the enemy bullets here as well. Move the e bullets. Now, now here's something that's interesting. Um, uh, we actually, oh, this is a very old fun. Oh man, we're just like excavating old old material. So this is actually using, this is actually using uh, an for 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 next loop uh, right now. So it actually doesn't even use a for in all loop. We're gonna use a for in all loop. So for my e bull in all e bulls do. Uh, and then look, this is all we hard coded for the bullets, for the player bullets. We hard coded a certain movement speed. Um, we can get rid of that now. Uh, instead, we can just go move my evil. 
we have this move function, remember? We have this little move function that we created, move, and it just uses sx and sy to change the position of the object. So we can just reuse this for, uh, for any bullets. But now that we're here, how about we reuse this also for the player bullets? We're gonna do this in a second, but first let's just finish this up. Uh, now this is a function here that checks if the bullet has left the screen. Uh, now for the enemy bullets, we can leave the screen in all direction. The enemy bullets might be flying in all directions, so I want, to, I want this to be more robust. We can actually use the if statement that we had here uh, from the enemies. We can just reuse that one and we're going to plug it in here. Now it uses my n as the helper variable, so we're going to use my ebull in here. And remember, it kind of was missing the part where it wouldn't remove the enemies if they left the screen on the top because the enemies are not doing this. Well, we can do this now. So if my ebull uh, dot y is smaller than whatever, minus eight, then, and in this case, we're gonna remove my, uh, uh, my ebull from ebulls. I'm going a bit fast, but uh, but you know, these are none of these are new things. We're just moving things around. We're just reusing stuff that we already had. We reuse the move function. Uh, first of all, this entire loop we kind of like tried to reuse code that we had previously, but it was too old, <laughs> so we kind of wrote it from scratch. We're just looping through all of the e, e bullets, enemy bullets. We're using the move code to move them, and then we're using this if statement here to check if uh, the bullets has left the screen. We might actually, this if statement could be also a separate function. If you want to make it into a separate function, go ahead, that's, that's probably a good idea. Right, so so that's it. That now we're moving the e bullets and uh, there is no collision detection with the, with the e bullets yet. We're gonna do that later, but I, first I wanna see. Oh, by the, by the way, we're moving them, but we also have to animate them. Animate my e bull. right. There is no animation speed for our bullets. Um, let us put the animation speed as something that is part of the default. Well, actually, no, because might be the bullets will be will be animated differently at different speeds. So let's just set an animation speed. It's fine. My evil dot any speed equals 0 0.4. Let's try that. Yeah, there it is. There's the bullet. Actually, 0 0.4 looks nice. Maybe a bit faster. Yeah, faster is a bit better. Yeah, now it's it's it has the proper feeling of a of a of a shooter bullet. Now it's not moving, but we can easily make it move because it, again, it's we have like this move function, so we can go my my e, e bull dot dot sy just like to demonstrate, right? We can just set, set the sy to one, and then it should move downwards. There we go, it's moving. No collision detection yet, but the general idea works. So let us just make a new. I guess we put it in behavior again. Oh man, I don't like putting all of the functions in one. Maybe a new tab. Let's let's uh, let's make a new tab. I'm gonna call this bullets. Um, and I'm gonna call, do a function called just fire. Uh, and when we fire enemy bullets, we're just gonna assume that it's always an enemy that fires the bullets. So we're gonna go um, my n, like which enemy is firing the bullet. And then we're gonna take all of this code that we had, this, this test code, we're gonna get this out. Oops. Close things up here. And then we're gonna put it in this fire function. So this function will be responsible for spawning an enemy bullet and making enemy fire, right? So uh, the X and Y position, we're gonna take from position of where the enemy is. 
Um, sprite is fine. We're gonna move the sprite a little bit further down so it's together with the animation. We're gonna set the sprite to 32 actually because that's the first sprite of the animation. <clears throat> SY. We're gonna leave it at 1 for now. It's gonna be slow bullets for now, but maybe we're gonna speed them up. We're probably gonna speed them up. And, and that's it. Uh, later on, we're going to make this function a bit more complex. Maybe we want to um, specify a direction that we're firing in, but as a simple fire function, that's fine. And now something I want to do is when we do the picker, uh, where is it? We're picking the attack, right? Instead of like for now, just instead of doing the attack run, we're just going to fire the, the enemy will fire instead of the um, instead of doing the attack runs the enemies will fire the bullet so fire my end so i commented out the code that was responsible for making the enemy attack and instead i'm just going to fire a bullet there we go we're firing the bullets hey nice 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 Okay, so now uh, what we have to do is uh, do collision detection. As you can see, the bullet is actually smaller a little bit than a sprite. It's actually six by times six. So let's start with that first. So we're gonna go my my evil, and you can see all the systems are make it make it so much easier to work now because we don't have to create the system from scratch. We can use already existing systems, right? So my evil call. Uh, width equals six. The width is six and the height is six. And we're gonna just see how that feels. Now in the update function, we're actually gonna do the collision with the with the bullets, and it's gonna be the same thing that we did with enemies before. Um, so here, moving enemies, uh, collision with enemy with bullets, collision ship and enemies. This is probably the best one. We're gonna pick this. We're gonna paste this in collision with ship and e bullets. Right, so again, ignoring this when we are invulnerable, uh, or basically just only doing this if we are not invulnerable, uh, then we're gonna uh, go through all of the evils, not enemies, evils, and instead of my, and I'm gonna actually use my evil, not envils, evils. So my evil, we do collision between the uh, enemy, no, not the enemy, the evil and the ship. And if there is a collision, we explode the ship. We did uh, remove the lives and so forth. Uh, and here, this else, we don't need that uh, because that's actually something that's already done here. So that's it. That's it. That's that's all. We just like reuse the same function. We probably could also put this in the, like a universal function, but there's not going to be any other things that we're going to collide with, so that's fine. Ah yeah, we died to a bullet, baby. Let's try this again. Yeah. Now I'm going to try to. Mm, see, it feels a bit odd, and that's something I did during testing. I spoiler alert, I actually did some testing on this. Uh, let me put the speed to very, very slow. To maybe we're gonna, we can we can see this happening. I want to make the bullet strike me. I want to make the bullet go really, really close to me, but not quite touch me. You know. <laughs> See, it's, it's a bit weird, especially when, when it's diagonally. Uh, let me try it again. So here's the bullet, here's the bullet coming in and see when we're exploding. See how we exploded before the bullet actually touched us? That's not cool. That doesn't feel good. Uh, so the problem is uh, these orange areas here. These are problematic and they have a very bad relationship with these orange areas, right? So these orange areas are technically, they are part of our ship, but they read visually as empty space. And the same with the bullets, they read as empty space. So the bullets actually deadlier than it looks. And you never want to err on that side. You always want to err on the opposite side. You always want the bullets to look more deadlier than it actually is. 
because then you know um, you won't get the situation where the player thinks they can hit a gap between the two bullets, but actually they, they can't. But they can't see because the bullets is giving them wrong information. The sprite is giving them wrong information. So um, what I want to do is I want to radically reduce RR, radically reduce the size of the collision box of the bullets. I want to actually reduce the size of the bullets to just the centerpiece. You, we could go with this. That would also work. But I want to radically reduce it to just like this really r red dot in the center. Um, we're not going to tell the players that. Um, the result will be that you will only really lose a life when you really get hit by a bullet. And when it's kind of like, you know, grazing the bullet a little bit, it, you sometimes will get away. Even the sprites are technically overlapping. Because, you know, these things, you know, this thing, these pixels here, the yellow pixels here or the orange pixels here they technically they're not even like really part of the bullet right they're kind of like outlines of the bullet they're kind of like contrast outlines so i want to make sure that only the center part of the bullet is actually something that is colliding now this immediately causes some troubles because um we can obviously set the width and height of the bullets to two and that will get us a nice square of this size. The problem is that the position of that square is not going to be at right. It's not going to be in the center of the bullet. It's going to be off, off to the side here. There's ways of dealing with this. I mean, the good way, the, the good way, the proper way of doing this is going to be updating our collision functions once again, you know, it's being like, all right. And then we're going to have to calculate the left and top differently. And then also this will affect the right and bottom. And then the math gets really, really, really convoluted and gets me a lot of headaches and uh, and it's just like for this one object, right? We're not going to use and other objects won't take advantage of this. Um, I really, they could, but we're not going to make them. So what I want to instead propose is I want to, I want to just draw the bullets differently, right? I'm just going to draw them differently. I'm, uh, we're going to, we're going to leave the collision detection where it is. It just the sprite of the bullet will be drawn uh, two pixels to the left and two pixels up. So this collision box will align with the center of the sprite. All right, let's let's just do that. Let's just let's just make it like a special bullet mode uh, when we draw the uh, the the bullets. So we're gonna go like my evil set bull equals true. There's a or let's call this bull mode. <laughs> It's always funnier, bull mode, <laughs> whatever. So we're going to set the bull mode to true. And then in the draw function, draw my sprite. See, we're kind of already doing that anyway, right? Like when we, the shake is on, then we're already moving the sprite around to, from where it's supposed to be. So we're kind of like, why not just go like if bull mode then and then be like, all right, SPRX minus equals two, SPRY minus equals two. What's the big deal? We already have those helper variables anyway. They are supposed to kind of like able, um, allow us to manipulate the position of something, right? We already did that for the shaking on the last episode. And just get rid of, get away you sign. Friendship with sign has ended. Um, instead, we are just going to use the same helper variables to now offset the bull. Oh, by the way, it's, it should, should be my SPR dot bull mode. And remember, we're using like the same. We take advantage of the fact that we're setting the bull mode to true for the bullets, but none of the other sprites in the game have bull mode. Even the bull mode set to nil. Um, but if it's set to nil, then it counts as false, and so there's not going to be any problem. Let's see how those new bullets now work. All right, let's come at me, bro. Come, come at me, bullet. I think that would be good. See? Now I'm kind of like, but it's okay. It doesn't seem weird, right? It doesn't seem like, oh man, oh that's, a, I don't know what's happening there. Oh, I'm not not getting hit hit by the bullets. I don't know. That's kind of unfair. That's, I'm kind of like getting a freebie here. Nobody will complain about getting a freebie about not getting hit by a bullet, about dodging a bullet. It's, 
it went above the wing of the spaceship. It's fine, right? It just feels more natural. It feels better. But obviously, you know, you can still fly into bullet. Don't get, <laughs> don't get me wrong. <laughs> the collision detection still works if you get hit properly. It's just like in these kind of like edge cases, you, 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 you know, it, it closes an eye or two. Yeah, that's, that seems fine. Okay, so two things I wanted to do uh, in this episode uh, before we move on is I want to take a look at our actual the player bullets because this function, this little this little loop here that we had here, that is a bit old. Let us bring it up to speed to the episode 23 mode of thinking skill level, right? Let's just replace it with a for in all function. So we're going to go four in all, and this time it's going to be the normal bulls, the player bulls. So my bull, four in all, do. Uh, we can get rid of this. That's good. And then we're actually going to use the move function here. We're going to use the move. It's instead of this part here. which means uh, when we're spawning the bullet, we also have to set the SX property. So the bullet actually moves because right now when we do this, the, our, it doesn't even work. We're setting SX and SY. What is, what is happening? Oh, OBJ is nil value. Oh, okay. Update. Uh, I, I said move my E bull. It should be, of course, my bull. Because we're using the bull, my bull helper variable in this loop. And we just copy So right now we spawn the bullets like they're not moving. Because the SX and SY are set by default to zero. So when we're firing the bullets now, we have to set the speed at which the bullets are flying at the moment where we're actually spawning them. Uh, that's going to be also an update function where we press the buttons. That's all the way up. up. Oh, let's draw. Update. That's here. Um, so let us just set SY, we're going to set it to minus 4. Going up at a speed of 4, that's pretty fast. Yeah. And otherwise everything's fast. I like how slow the bullets are flying. Let us do some tweaks on the bullets. So as I said, I want to maybe um, make the speed of the bullet a bit higher. Um, I, we had it at one, but I think one is still pretty lame. Yeah, it's, it's kind of lame. So let's set it to two. Uh, also, I noticed that the bullet is not um, launching from the center of the of the player sprite. Let's give it a plus four on X and Y. So it's really launching in the center of the player sprite. Uh, let me set the sp speed to 0 0.2. I just want to, because now it's moving so fast, I cannot really see. So exactly, I want to make sure that we are not... Oh, yeah, see, it's, uh, it's it's too much. Let's put it plus 3. Yeah, that's better now. Maybe in the Y direction, plus 4 is okay, because it's kind of okay if it doesn't spawn like exactly in the center of the sprite, but more kind of like below. Uh, I would maybe even go plus six. Let's try that. Let's see how that looks. Yeah. Now it kind of feels like it's going, you know, the arms are kind of like maybe creating the bullet through some kind of like, I don't know, magical abilities. You, you, who knows what the aliens are up to these days. Um, right. So let us set it back to two again. It's really fast, but that's, I think we can handle it. Okay. Right. So something I also wanted to do is I want to have a muzzle flash for the enemies. I told you the same principles just have to apply. You, you just have to think of all the things and it's it just like you think of making a little game, right? It's fine. But then once you go like, oh, muzzle flashes for the player. Okay, we got this. But now also now muzzle flashes for the enemy. Like there's a lot to, to take care of. Uh, we don't have really like a universal muzzle flash system and I don't want to create one. You can create one if in, the, in the dog zone if you want to. I think it might be actually a good idea. <laughs> uh, but I actually want to reuse the system that we already have. We have the flashing. So why don't we just make the enemy flash when they fire a bullet? 
Uh, we're not gonna go my n dot flash uh, equals. Just make it flash for five frames. Let's see how that looks. Yeah. Maybe a bit too much. Maybe four frames is enough. Yeah. It seems like, you know, maybe there's a flash and it illuminates their face, you know, and that's kind of, it's a good approximation of a muzzle flash for now. Something that's very important is we want to kind of have a cool sound effect for that because right now, it's not really a cool bullet if it doesn't. It does, if there's no sound effect involved, and it's also a good warning that the bullet is coming. So let us do like a, some some kind of like some kind of. I'm gonna use some of the nasty because it's enemies, right? Yeah, something like this maybe. It sounds more like an impact. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, so like it's, it's it feels more like spitting out. Let's try different. Let's add maybe mix them a little bit maybe. And now we're gonna go to the effects tab. No. No. Maybe this. What about the vibrato? Let's get some vibrato in here. Yes. Uh, I think. Oops. I, I want to go a bit higher. Oh yeah, that, that sounds good. Sounds like spitting. Okay, uh, sound effect 29. So when we fire, we're gonna go SFX 29. Yeah. Yeah, that, that seems good. See, now suddenly the sound effects bring so much. Don't forget the sound effects, they're, they're, they're quite important. That's good. All right, and now I want to actually, because right now we're kind of like doing this little hack, I want to actually have a proper, uh, proper uh, timer for the firing, because right now we're using timer from the uh, enemy attack, so let us do, let us put a ring on it. Let us get it, let, let's get this official. Um, so here is the pick timer and the way we do the pick timer, we're also going to do a, a firing timer basically. So we're going to do like if T, um, um, we're going to do a, 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 okay, should we make a different number than the bullets? Um, let's do it, so, I don't know, let's go do 30 so it's really frequent. And we're going to go pick fire. Now this is not good. This is this is not good what we're doing here. But I'm just want to see something, and when maybe later on we can think about how we can reuse these things. But basically we're just going to copy this entire function, and we're going to rename this as pick fire, and we're going to return this first function to this original. We're going to restore its ability to to pick an attacker and we're gonna, um, because you know, again, we don't want enemies in the back to fire, right? So, and also we don't want enemies to fire that are actually currently attacking. So yeah, so pick fire basically using the same code as pick attack. Uh, I'm gonna make this a bit more compact. I don't think it needs to be so spread out. And then later on, we're gonna maybe think if there's a way of, of how we can take this and kind of like turn this into a function and then we can make pick attack and pick fire reuse the same thing somehow. We're gonna think think of, of things for later on. For now, I just wanna see the enemies attack and fire at us. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, there's one coming. There's one coming. Oh yeah, look, look at them. Oh, this is good. Um, okay. I actually, I want to do something. I don't like how the bullets are fire firing at this, at the, like a set frequency. So what I want to maybe do is something like, I'm going to have a, in a start game function, uh, I'm going to have next fire. I'm going to set it to zero. 
and I'm going to do the firing frequency a little bit different. It would be nice if, the, if the, it wasn't predict predictable when the next bullet is coming. Um, so instead of the set, you know, one bullet per second frequency, we, we're going to do it a bit differently. We're going to do kind of like the same thing as we did with the lockout. We're basically, we're going to say if T is greater than next fire, then pick fire. And then we're going to go next fire equals T plus and then a random number. So we're going to go like maybe 20. So at least 20 frames plus R&D 20, something like this. We have a little function here. So um, yeah, like with the lockout, we're going we're gonna to set a frame in the future at which the next fire will occur. And then we're just going to wait until T, until our counting function that counts the, the individual frames, until it reaches that future date, <laughs> that future frame number. And if that future number occurs, we're going to fire a bullet and then we're going to randomize again the next time we're going to fire a bullet. And this should get us more and more. See? Now it's kind of like a little bit less predictable when the bullets are coming. There's more variation. Just generally like two different ways of of using timers. A set timer here in our attack frequency or kind of like more a bit of a randomized timer here uh, using a, a ded dedicated variable. <laughs> Maybe a bit too frequent. I don't know. It's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. I mean, it's, I don't don't have any too much problems. Maybe we have to raise the health points a little bit. This is going to be it for today. Uh, I think we did a lot. Uh, again, these episodes are getting very long, but you know, it's, there's just a lot to do. Okay, so we have bullets on the screen. They're firing. Their collision detection is really nice and polished. Um, but um, we want to have, and that's kind of like a big thing. We always want to have a nice firing patterns, spread shots and everything. So that's something I want to be um, tackling maybe in the next episode. But for now, let us move on to the dog zone. Today's dog zone, uh, we have, I have four tasks this summer and I came up with four tasks for you. Um, first task, quite simple. Uh, I talked about how uh, making a nice bullet design is difficult. I kind of came up with one and you are free to copy this one. Um, but I think a good doggy zone task is to come up with more bullet designs. Just come up with, because you know, in every sh shoot em up game, there's not just one bullet. There's often multiple bullet designs, maybe bigger bullets, smaller bullets, you know, maybe, I don't know, different colored bullets. Uh, I want you to come up with multiple designs for enemy bullets and test them out and see what frequency and you know, what animation works best. And it's, I think it's very important for you to, or for us to start thinking about, you know, visibility of bullets. What's, um, this also relates to, you know, how the bullets fly as well, right? Some fast moving bullets have to be animated differently than slow moving bullets. Um, so yeah, I want you to uh, design different bullets and actually make maybe different enemies shoot different bullets um, at different speeds, maybe even um, to kind of have like a, an arsenal of weaponry ready for our enemies. Second task is um, something that we didn't do, but we might at some point in the future, um, is to integrate the shooting into the um, and into the attacks. So right now we're using those timers in the, in the pick timer function to fire the bullets. Um, but it would be kind of nice if, um, you know, when the enemies are attacking, if they started maybe shooting the bullets somehow. For example, I mean, the spinny ship, instead of flying sideways and trying to ram you, it could also just fire bullets at you instead. It would be just, just the same thing, basically. So maybe that would be a good challenge, but maybe you can come up with something on your own. Try to come up with at least one or two ways of how maybe some of the enemies, some of your own enemy in this design maybe, are actually uh, integrating the shooting into their attack patterns. And then two final tasks, which are really difficult, which is something that we're going to definitely deal with in the next episode. Uh, make an enemy aim a shot at you. Aimed shots. A staple thing of, of um, 
shmup design, not homing shots, not any shots that follow you around on the screen. Just like, you know, aim and shoot at you and you have to get out of the way or else you get hit. How do the aim shots figure it out? That's one challenge, quite difficult, but you can do it. Uh, and the final challenge, spread shots. So there's an enemy and it shoots in all directions. Like, you know, six, eight, 16 bullets, just all go in all directions. How to do that? Again, if you can figure it out, Try it out. I mean, you, you can go into just four directions, like up, down, left, and right. I think that we can at least do it like this, maybe diagonally as well. But what if can we can can we make it a bit more organic as well? Try to figure this out. I think it would, it's worthwhile. We're definitely going to tackle this subject on the next episode. But for now, I wanted to give a big, big, big thank you to all the people that made this show possible, that supporting this show on coffee. Yep, this video series is being supported generously by my viewers on Coffee. Thank you so much for your support. And if you aren't a supporter yet, consider a sub or a donation over at Coffee. You get perks like being able to access new episodes ahead of time. Check it out at coffee.com slash lazydevs. Ah yeah, everybody. Yes, yes, yes. This is, uh, again, sorry for the long episodes. There's just so much to do and it's getting so fun. You could, like, the game comes alive and it's, ah, I'm, I'm just having so much fun with these, with this episode. And um, yeah, the bullets are really the thing that makes it feel like a proper shooter. Now things are getting really, really exciting and they get extra exciting on the next episode where we're going to do spread shots, aim shots. We're going to saturate the screen bullets. It's going to be awesome. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.